Please join me in singing number 131 in the Missalette, Blessed Be Your Sacrifice.
Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
dwelling in a land overshadowed by death, light has arisen.
And Jesus wakes up and calms the seas. He calms things down. He lowers the temperature. When we look at the upper room and the apostles are filled with fear, they have great anxiety because their leader has now been crucified. He told them he would rise from the dead. He hasn't done that yet. And, uh, and he appears in the upper room and verifies the resurrection, the greatest act that, of our faith and of the Son of God. And what does he say? He says to them, as though you were walking into the room uh, of this church, into this parish tonight, he says, peace be with you. In other words, his words, his actions, his presence are designed to bring peace to the human heart. Even to those who don't believe in him. Even to the creatures of the earth. I don't know if you've seen this video on YouTube. I think it's over in France. Uh, there were some construction workers uh, rebuilding the interior of this church. And all the doors of the church were open for the construction project. And then, as they looked, one worker kind of looked around to one of the doors, a, a, a stag, a deer, a buck, walked into the church. Right? And then didn't just walk around, but like walked through the sanctuary of the church, kind of looking at everything, and the construction workers filming this, and then that, that stag, that, that buck, gets to the center of the altar, and then looks at the tabernacle, and just stares at the blessed sacrament for a few moments, before quietly, peacefully, calmly, walking back out of the church. What do we do when we are preparing for things in life? Well, we take the steps of preparation. For students, we study, right? For construction, we look at the plans, we order the materials. Uh, if we're playing a game, if we're in athletics, we mentally prepare for the game in the locker room before we go in. We focus on instilling and embracing an interior peace, peace in our hearts, and then a mental peace, a peace in our minds, so that our fears don't overwhelm us, no matter what the project is. We go on a trip, we plan ahead. All of these steps, but, and yet, fear, stress, anxiety, get, get a hold of us, and what do we do in those moments? <clears throat> well, Jesus shows us a couple, gives us a couple tips. One, if we look at the first reading, what he says is that the Word of God is aimed at bringing peace to the anxieties of the world. He says, for those who listen to the Word of God, those who hear the Word of God, in other words, we take the Word of God here at Mass, we take it in our prayer with Scripture, or maybe on a podcast that we're getting, and we bring it into our bodies, we bring it into our ears, and then that goes up to our brain, and our brain actually unites itself with the Word of God physiologically. Right? And when we're thinking about a theological truth, we're in communion with God. When we're thinking about a theological truth, that's how it practically happens. That we're, we're, we're physically united with God when we're thinking about a theological truth like a piece of scripture, part of scripture. The second thing is, he uh, in the second reading, he talks about being free of anxieties. For those that are dedicated to God in their vocation, priests, brothers, and sisters, what's the anxiety towards? It's the anxiety towards pleasing God. For those in the married vocation, what's the anxiety towards? It's towards pleasing a spouse. Rightly so. But he's saying that this is a consequence of the fall. This is a reality that we worry about these things. And, and we want to please God and we want to please our spouse if we're in marriage. So he's recognizing the issue. And then what happens here at Capernaum? Christ goes in and confronts one of the sources of our stress, one of the sources of our anxiety, who is the devil. The devil, his plan, his goal, is to afflict our thoughts, to afflict our heart, to afflict our emotions. He's looking for our weaknesses. He can't... He doesn't know what we're thinking, but he can observe what we're doing and, and then draw conclusions from that. And that's how he does it. But he doesn't know your thoughts, just so you know. It's kind of a, you know, that's hopefully a relief, right? Maybe that relieves some stress that the devil doesn't know your thoughts. Right? Maybe a little bit. So he doesn't know your thoughts, but he does watch and he does kind of, he's on the hunt. What does Jesus do? He drives him out. The name of Jesus in the time of a temptation can be uh, a great source of peace and calm. The name of Jesus is, is invoked every time we come to Mass because He wants to sanctify, He wants to blanket His people and protect His people with His holy name. I know uh, one of our missionaries was at the Omaha airport on his way to get trained on how to lead mission trips to the third world uh, over Christmas or just after Christmas. 
And uh, they found him unconscious in the airport, and then, they, then he was declared dead at the, at the airport. And uh, they did an autopsy, and he had a pulmonary embolism, so it was silent, unpredictable, undetectable, but he passed away. How did he pass away? He passed away on his way to train, to lead Christ's mission trip for Jesus Christ in his life. Talk about the great peace that I saw on his mom and dad's face at the funeral in Sioux Falls. Talk about the peace that was in his team, who's at the University of Memphis, right, as they went back to campus to carry on the mission of Bible studies for college students. When we embrace the Word of God and we turn to the name of Jesus, it brings us peace and calm. So when you're worked up, when you're upset, when you're stressed out, and you're turning to your internal water tank, you're turning to your internal fuel tank, and you're about to blow up or stress out or melt down, however it happens for you, because we all do it our own way, then we can turn to the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus, and say, Jesus, please help me. We can cry out to Jesus like Mother Teresa did, did and say, Jesus, uh, this is my time of need. We can cry out and use the name of Jesus, just repeat, repeatedly say it, Jesus, 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 and let, it, let him slow us down and bring us the peace, the calm, the tranquility that we long for, that we're upset that we may not have, that we don't think is possible, but if we say the name of Jesus, it can help us. Another thing that the church gives us, that Jesus gives us in this blessing with his name, would be holy water. Having holy water in your home is a way of sanctifying your home and bringing a reminder of your baptism into the place of your residence. Blessing your home with holy water, the four corners of the house, ancient Christian custom. Blessing your property and your business, anything that you own, your assets with holy water is a great way of dedicating those, those material places and things to Him. What does that do? It, it again blankets, it blankets you with the holy name of Jesus. It repels the evil one and the consequences of sin, stress and anxiety and all of those things. So Jesus wants to free you, is the good news, from stress and anxiety, from those things that wear you down. He wants to set you free of those things with His holy name, with His sacred word, with the sacramentals of the church, holy metals and holy water. And if we turn to him in those times and we just say the name of Jesus, he will help us find the peace that he wants for us.
We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord and hear our prayer. For those in political office and positions in business and society, that they may understand clearly the responsibility to build God's kingdom by lives of integrity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the students who will receive their first reconciliation next Saturday, that they will experience God's love and mercy through his sacrament. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For students, faculty, and staff of St. Peter Catholic School in Canby, that the Spirit will guide them in growing in their Catholic faith, offering outstanding education and serving in love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For parents, grandparents, and those who lead families, that their efforts to raise children to walk in the way of Christ may be blessed and supported by others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the sick, that they receive the healing they need and the love they deserve. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Joe and Eleanor Sturzinger, that they will bask in the light of God's grace in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. And that the next time we have anxiety or frustration or we're upset, we find ourselves upset, we simply pray the name of Jesus ten times until we cool down and we pray to the Lord. We ask all these things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, the fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and the work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being, and while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now we possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim.
as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to our salvation, true faith may ever increase through Christ our Lord. Amen. We'll have communion at both entrances, but before we conclude with the sign of the cross, we have an announcement, so please be seated.
It's not, it's from October. We all got one in the fall. And there's been copies in the back of the church too. But I don't take time to get an updated one. I don't think there's been much for changes, to be honest with you. So maybe a little more money coming in, maybe, possibly. So, um, we gotta, we got to redo the kitchen. We all know that's out of code, you know. If that was downtown on the main street, they would have shut us down a long time ago. So, uh, we got to get the sewer system working better. Most of the ladies know how good that isn't. And uh, also, the, the roof is real bad on the entryway here. It's got to be fixed. So, these are things we got to do, you know. And so, we need, and we need money to do it. So, we're asking for your help. We're asking for your prayers, your money, your financial support. We're also asking for you to talk it up. I mean, this this is all our church. We're all we're all members of this team. And if, if you disagree with what's, what's going on, come to me. I didn't say this, but talk to Father Ron. <laughs> um, and we'll, we'll, we'll try to iron it out, you know, and resolve the differences. But I really think you guys have done a bang-up job. And I'm really proud of what we got. And, and I'm really proud of what I think we're going to have in front of us here. So, um, that's all I can say for now. So we're asking for financial support, personal support, and please promote it when you can. I mean, it's we don't need people not going downtown and and bashing it. I mean, it's nobody wins in a deal like that. We're all we're all better than that. So just please support it. And if you got got if you got mixed feelings or a problem about it, talk to us. Myself, Art, Mark, we're all in the finance committee. Um, we'll we'll see what we can resolve. But. Uh, it's all I have for now, I guess, so thank you. Please rise. Yeah, as, we, as you prayerfully consider the financial gift and support, uh, just know that there are folks who throughout the day make a stop and just come in quickly, say a prayer, pick a few things up. So the, the church is God's house. This is God's house. Jesus and the Blessed Sacrament is here. and. Uh, this is a request, a, 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 a yeah, request from him as well, that that you take care of it, that we take care of his house. So, as we uh, turn to the Lord and we conclude mass, the Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the mass is ended. Please join me in singing the recessional. Number 728 in the music issue, Leave Me Lord.